Today we're going to be talking about the Ryzen CPU and folding at home. Now my perspective with uh, this is going to be coming from the fact that I participate in Overclock.net's team competition, which is an inter-team uh, competition thing that we do where there are multiple categories and this is the team competition for overclock.net might as well just show it off real quick so you got different um, categories you got the i7 GPU O which is GPU open GPU L which is I forget uh, you got the Nvidia you got AMD and you get GPU wild and they're they're different performance categories so everybody is pretty much even um, well at least in terms of theoretical capability and um, and you can see here my 1800x is in third place and it was in first uh, at one point the graph is still a little messed up uh, the guy needs to update it um but yeah um this is a really interesting thing for uh, if you have a folding team and you want to encourage your members to up their throughput get them to compete with each other because we're all geeks and we all want to be the best and there is a 12 core limit on that category right now um so I only use 12 of the cores uh, of the Ryzen to fold with. And that, in, uh, that brought to light a very interesting issue with the CPU. So let's set up uh, a core here. Let's give that 12 and I want client type beta next unit percentage 100 uh, and max packet size small so that's going to get that and I'll tell you a little about the system I have it running on Linux it's on Debian and I've uh, compiled my own uh, version of the Linux 4.11.3 kernel where I have enabled um, GCC uh, Zen optimizations uh, during the compile so I'll F10 out of this and go to my kernel directory 4.11.3 and uh, it should still be the same settings from the last time I built this. I'm hitting it. Yeah, it's, I think it's doing it. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I had to do um, some business to get this to show up here because initially there is only Opteron, Athlon 64, Hammer, and then Atom, Core 2, and I think like Generic or something like that. But that definitely helps. Um, another thing that helps is treat your Linux computer like it's a server. You don't need responsiveness in the desktop because you're going to be disabling the desktop if you're going to be doing the folding just dedicated on the Ryzen. I know that's kind of like a, a sin. I really, the only thing that can, that Ryzen does right now is crunch folding. That's all it does. Oh, and look at this. So those adjusted threads, even though it was getting 108 before, at least it's showing in here 
using the last frame as a basis, 130,000 points per day instead of 108, which is a pretty big difference. Um, I could show you where I got... Uh, so this is the uh, GitHub page for the kernel patch. And this is what I used. I'm pretty sure that there's uh, a different way you could do this. There's a whole lot of different ways you could do a lot of this stuff. That's what I've learned about Linux. But um, this was the easiest uh, that I found. You just download the patch file. And I felt weird having all of this. I don't know how it treats comments. So, um, I went and I just edited the, the patch file and got rid of all of these lines and it, and it worked just fine. Uh, just something I did because I didn't want to fuck up. Um, and that might be all you need to do. If you use 4.11.3 or higher kernel plus this, and you make sure you're using Zenver 1 then you should be golden. It should fix a lot of the threading issues going on. So let's get into that computer. And Putty sometimes does that, so let's restart that. Let me log into it. And I'll run HTOP, which is basically like task manager for... Uh, for Linux in the terminal. Oh, one quick little thing. I need to do service light dm stop. And then go to htop. There we go. Just, you, you want basically nothing running on the computer. So right now, I'll also pull up hfm.net, which is running last frame and frame time so I could see what my changes do in basically like real time. And let's watch what the threads are doing here. So you could see on uh, on Linux each thread spawns its own process essentially. Which is great for this purpose because on windows you just have uh the main process and then you know say you're using something like process lasso so you go in the process lasso and you cpu affinity it and then you have this and it if there are multiple threads in that process well it'll figure out how to bounce those around however it wants but you tell it what to use well in uh and here, like I said, each thread is its own process. It's only using 12, so it's only going to use 12 with the CPU. And we should be coming up, yet we have a percentage done. So right now, it's saying 108,000 um, PPD. Which is actually really, really good. And that's on an A7 core. And that might be because the changes I did in my kernel, because the problem is that um, it, what it usually will do is it won't distribute the threading properly. Because if you remember, with Ryzen, you have, um, this is a crayon. Crayons are nice, aren't they? With Ryzen, you have one core complex that has four cores and then you have another core complex with four And then each core complex has, well, actually it's in the middle, but I'll put it here. It has level three cache. 
and you can't read that but deal with it and um, I'll try right at Neater over here and the problem with this is if it doesn't stay uh, coherent with um, within a core complex and it will and if a, if a process you know let's say it's it's well as you can see here right here um, this one that I have highlighted it's working on core 2 and if it stays on 2 and then all of a sudden uh, jumps to 12 well then what the CPU has to do is it has to transfer the contents of the level 3 cache that have to do with whatever work that that was doing and then it has to move it over the infinity fabric to the cache because it would be incurring cache misses in that uh, in that process and um, one way you could end up fixing that and actually increasing your PPD a whole lot is you would have to manually do this I have not figured out an automatic way to go about this yet but you have to set your uh, affinities exactly like this just for the 12 thread thing now I because I'm, I'm limited in what I could do in the team competition I can't do all 16 um, so I haven't really had the opportunity to go through um, and uh, see what happens if uh, I just let it use all 16 But this configuration that I'm putting in, and it's hard to do and think and talk at the same time, seems to not have any cash penalty problems. And you will have a pretty sizable increase in your points per day using the Ryzen CPU. I do not know this the same problem on my 5820K at all. And now you have static CPUs set and they pretty much just work like that. And uh, we're at 2%. We're almost at 3%, probably at 4%. We'll see a, a sizable jump in the points per day. And, um... Yeah, if anybody knows a way you could automate things in HTOP, that would be awesome. Um, I do know that there you could do... In, in, uh, uh, processes will inherit core affinities. And I'm not sure which one of these actually makes that end up happening. It's not this one because I think that one goes away when you get a new work unit. It's not that one. It's, it, ah, child, child. So it's probably this one. So if I probably set this one to zero, one, two, get rid of three, four, five, get rid of five, six, seven, eight, get rid of 11, get rid of 13. So if I probably do that on that guy, um, next time I get a work unit at least all of these guys will only be told to use those but it, but the problem is it won't be individual they'll just inherit these values which isn't necessarily a, a good solution 